Hi Q, season four, episode nineteen. This song again. Does he do this every time? That is absurd. Oh what? The second car is episode in the row where someone's being targeted. Yeah, I guess who's stupid enough to target Nishinoya? This is really worrying. It's what I would say if we hadn't already been through Ushiwaka. Episode 19, The Ultimate Challengers. I heard himself. That's a big gamble, though. What I don't like about that strategy is that it relies on Nishinoya's failure. I mean, for that matter, we just saw this in the previous two episodes with Kemba. It would be a crushing blow if the other person can't handle it, but it's such a, like, unilateral focus strategy. It feels like it all comes undone if the person's better than you think, and they can rise above it and manage to cope with the challenges, which I'm confident Nishinoya can do. I mean, he's proved it. Speaking of positive attitudes and the, the mental fortitude that is indicative of Karasuno as a whole, Nishinoya is a great example of that. The Shiri Torizawa match comes to mind when he was talking about, just give me three, right? That's such a powerful way of, of looking at it. Like I was saying last episode, that confidence of throw me in and I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get to it. I mean, anyway, Nishinoya is the kind of person who will throw himself in front of other people's receives because he's so confident in his ability to do that. It would even be somewhat poetic if someone did that for him this episode, but I don't think they need to. I mean, he can do it himself. Part of me feels like you risk waking Nishinoya up. Really, he really does this every time. It's really something amazing and horrible. You hate to see it. That I mean, that is a statement. I will give that to him. Let's two. Just don't give him a third. These are a very unlikely commentating team, but it's a cool choice. I can just feel the comp the, the lack of doubt that they have. Yeah. He's always there. He's one of the most uh, emotionally supportive people. And it comes through on the court, too. <laughs> this is his version of Tanaka's, of Tanaka's, like, face slapping. On sprained fingers. Look, all his fingers, basically. There we go. He got it. All good. They make him pay. Get this guy out of the serving position. That's interesting. Atsuki's there. Atsuki the hero of this point. Damn it. This whole team is weird. This whole team is weird. As a team, they're not unfriendly and they have a great appreciation for the sport, so there's respect here. Like I said, this feels like a meeting of peers. But there's something about players in this team that's just really off-putting. The way that their comments and observations and even compliments seem half genuine, half trash talk. I guess it's also kind of a power move if you destroy someone or beat someone and then compliment them. Tell them they're great at it. <laughs> Interesting. Right, so more power. It probably also interferes with the defenders who are used to following a certain contact point on the body. We gotta end this streak. Nice! I mean, that takes a lot of inner resolve, knowing he's being targeted, not to be like a little bit antsy and jump on the ball. There we go. Alright, how is he controlling the blockers? So he just moved over. Now nah, I got a bad feeling about this. What is about his strategy? Going left? Yeah, I understand, I think. He's faking them out with his body. They're not used to, to that. He's a weird pattern. Playing their instincts against them. It's kind of like the threat of left, in that it's their expectations that work against them. Or their, their habits, what they practiced. 
It looked like it was going right or straight. Whoa, this is a blowout. Yeah, they definitely have the flow of this game. That was beautiful between Kakai and Matsuki. Oh, Kagama going up. Damn! Feel good about this one. Oh. Sai was there. How did he even get there? Yeah, it was a good effort. This is looking real bad. That's high praise. I could ever miss He has no time to look down. That was awesome. So they're also targeting. Just play a role well. Got him. Two knees. Not still marking him. Give it right back to him. Good, maybe they're getting to him. Oh, I didn't realize it went out. I love that Tsugawara said he wanted to get revenge for Nishinoya because honestly, I was thinking the same thing. It's kind of funny because all that really happened was he missed two receives. But like on this team, with Nishinoya being who he is, it's such an insult. I don't know. Humanity is so, so fascinating and complex. There's so many intangibles that go into it. What unspoken thing, what intangibles go into Nishinoya to make that such an obvious thing that's so easy to understand? I don't know how to explain it, but people have like a, a space, you know, you create your space by who you are. You have a shape and that heavily influences the shape other people form around you. And it maybe even works better if it's unintentional, if it's not deliberately engineered, it's just who you are. People feel like certain things are are authentic and reliable, so your personality is, is kind of trusted. People can be naturally conflict prone, but and maybe this is overly optimistic, but I think people generally want to fit well and want to be in a state of fun engagement. Nishinoya has so much positive energy and is so giving. It's such a joy to be around and play with. It's such a, a beacon of support that your instinct just gravitates towards preservation and defense and camaraderie. And it's not Nishinoya's intention to curry favor, it's just who he is. Sorry, spare me your spare me your sympathetic backstory. I don't just well, until later, maybe. Later. His face. Goodbye. <laughs> I love how that's sort of hilarious. He came in like, this is my big moment. We got fed his backstory in three seconds and he's gone. Nice knowing you. Boo, boo yourself. Oh, that sucks. Damn, we fair weather fans. All right, now I actually feel bad for him, despite myself. What? I, just when I thought this fan section couldn't get any worse. That was very non-Karasuno of him. That was very Karasuno of him to say. You always stretch yourself to the farthest point. This may sound obvious, but in a lot of areas, the point of maximal learning and growth is that point where you're a little bit, just a little bit stretched out. You're just on the, the outer rim of your ability. That's the push. I mean, it's the same with like weight training. You're lifting a little bit too heavy. The heaviest thing you can lift. If you don't feel pain, if it's not uncomfortable, then you're probably not going to experience a lot of growth. I think that's a pattern that repeats even as you, you go broader and broader. If things are easy, if things are going really well, that's a great thing in itself. You know, that's a blessing. But if there's nothing uncomfortable or nothing that generates some 
some fear. If you sleep soundly every night with zero worries, then maybe you're not pushing your ability, which is not to say everyone has to do that, but it just depends on what your goals are. I maintain that one of Karasuno's greatest decisions was deciding to go all out and play to the maximum of their ability and what they think they can do on every play. No holding back on serves, for example. Kagama won't hold back. I do just focus. He's having another moment. We can see more clearly. Damn! Talk about revenge. Where did he pull that one from? I think I know what he means. Kagam has moments where he, he like goes into his head and he, he just feels it differently. Total focus. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's activated. I like how Nada is the most astute observer of Kagama's state. They know each other very well. Maybe smart. Icing Kagama. It is a very good matchup. He was holding the ball before he was holding the ball. Speaking of visualization. Damn, that looks so great. Whoa, keep it going. He stayed in the game. They're putting so much extra detail into his serves. Now they're getting to him, it's working. Was it touched? Was it touched? Okay. And just the fact that they didn't give up on this game, this round. Perfect. And he's back to set. That is terrifying, man. Just how much he loves it. It wasn't gonna last forever. That was a nice point swing, though. What are we at now? I've been kind of waiting for the, this this matchup, this direct matchup between them. They have history. The second part was unnecessary, but okay. Whoa! Taking out the sign. Sign, nice receive. Osamu just can't help himself. You know, people like that who they, they just have a thought and it just it has to come out. It could be great or terrible. It does seem like they're coming back. Uh oh. I don't like new people. <laughs> I don't like new people coming in. I don't like it. No thanks. No more. No more weapons. This can only mean trouble. From the intro, I was expecting a Nishinoya episode, like we got with Tanaka, but it ended up being a lot of different things at once. As always, I think one of the best things about this show is just how easy it is to love Karasuno and how their philosophy just feels right. It's palpable why they, they do well, why they succeed. I think this episode is some really compelling demonstrations of some familiar territory for Karasuno and who they are, and that comes out extra well in the comparison with Inarazaki. Nishinoya can't be broken, but Aran can. Karasuno has confidence in the long vision and can adjust and doesn't give up on sets. One of Inarizaki's servers held back because of fear. Karasuno never hold, holds back. Kageyama seems to get better with increased pressure, which is one of his greatest skills. Karasuno almost never disparaging. Anything like that is, is more teasing and a challenge to the potential they know their teammates have. Whereas the Asumu scolding incident was a little more like emotional and heated and blaming. And look at the their fans for that matter, booing their own player. I mean, it's a great matchup between two very powerful teams who seem even in terms of skill, but you know, I just feel, I just believe in Karasuno so heavily based on my feelings for them and who they are. Speaking of creating space, Inarizaki, led by Asamu, seems less reliable, less stable, less inspirational, a little bit off-putting even, less mature, maybe even childish. It would be really fun, I think, if Carson was able to, to dig deep and rally and win the second set, but I have, a, I have a feeling it'll go to a third.